Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Marty Mazzora, March 27th, Friday, 2020, 24 minutes before the market closes. Just a couple of minutes today. I want to share with you my insights or some insight into what's been moving this market the last few days. Pretty impressive rally um, happening again today, although the last 10 minutes, the market ran right up against 2610 S&P, and it's, yeah, it's rolling over a little bit, but... Um, Anyway, really volatile these days. Um, in front of you, may look familiar. We've got to go back a ways, but this is an illustration I was making back in here. This is December 24th, Christmas Eve, 2018, when we had that big uh, decline. And we charted this a lot uh, at the time, did a lot of videos for you. Literally right in here, I showed you a number of indicators, but I really focused on this one. As the market was getting way down here at the bottom, the short interest on SPY, the most traded ETF in the world, tracks the S&P 500, was at a crazy high level. And the point I was making there was that, folks, this is probably really close to the end, that when we get just a little tiny bit of good news, these people who have sold shares that they borrowed, who have to replace them, who lose their you-know-whats when the market goes higher, they're going to have to get out of those positions and getting out of a short means buying the stock. So my point was a little bit of good news. These people are going to come screaming back to the market or else they're going to get demolished. And, uh, and we're probably going to get a pretty good run out of it. So here we are again, right? The pretty much there, bigger decline, right? Faster decline. But um, look at the short interest now, right? As people got bearish, they shorted the stocks like crazy, in this case on the SPY, and uh, almost as high as we were before. And yeah, I could say, and, and yeah, and it's happening. Any little bit of good news, these folks here are going to have to cover, which means they're going to buy stocks. And then they're exacerbating any rally that may happen. Key fundamental difference in my story this time. Back here, we had good fundamental conditions. We actually still had a pretty good economy, even though I was very concerned about the trade war up in here, but I did say conditions are fine. And I was showing you, I was using the analog of 1998 when we had the Russia uh, default and uh, you know big hedge fund, currency crises, these kinds of things. And, um, but we had a decent macro backdrop and it was, it was roughly the same decline, and we came out of it and scored new highs. So I was showing that chart and said, folks, I really think we're okay, and, uh, and we're not going to make any adjustments. Here, as you know, we started making adjustments way up here because our analysis says we're not okay. And folks, um, I know I don't need to tell you this. We're really not okay in here. So these big rallies um, today was... And yesterday, I think, was as well, this big rebalancing phenomenon. Again, the market got destroyed. So if you have kind of an auto rebalance fund that has an allocation of stocks and bonds, well, it's time to sell stocks. I'm sorry, sell bonds and buy your stocks. I think a lot of that happened right toward the close yesterday. But it doesn't take much, frankly, to push this market higher. A little good news. They're going to pass a stimulus bill or what have you. These people are freaking out. Folks, this has nothing to do with a fundamentally good reason to go rushing back into the stock market. I've given you lots of texture on that. Uh, I want you reading every time that I share with you my log entries. And I don't share them all with you. Some of them are just so technical, they'll just put you to sleep. But where I think there's something in there that's pertinent to help all of us keep our heads about us. Um, make no mistake, bear markets are way that, where the biggest mistakes are made. And of course, clients, we're not going to go rushing in on short covering rallies, not when conditions are what they are, uh, even though a lot of people, you know, are probably going to. Unfortunately, this is where people get hurt. Now, could we, you know, just come screaming out of it? We could. We could. Could we miss, be missing an opportunity right here? Sure, we could be. But folks, the ice is too thin here. We're not going to take you across the pond. Uh, and the ice is already cracking. And the ice is going to have to thicken back up. And uh and we're going to have to be confident that the rate of change of really bad data to come is really slowing and it looks like it's beginning to bottom out. So hang in there with this market. It's going to not make a lot of sense. It's going to be incredibly volatile still. 
that initial deleveraging of financial positions or investment positions, I think that's over with. Um, now we got to get past the stimulus bill, take a deep breath, begin to look at um, you know what the future holds. And by the way, just did our U.S. macro score working through the countries this morning. That'll be later today when I'm done. But this was our score today, a negative 36. By the way, since I created the index way back here in 2017, that is the lowest score. On a back-tested basis, we only got that low right here just before the greatest recession since the Great Depression and right after the market rolled over and the tech bubble burst. It got lower. This is going to get much, much lower. A bunch of my data points don't even reflect what's really going on. Same thing in the country charts. So, um, so now, folks, this is not the kind of, you know, improving macro setup that you'd want to get growth in. Do we want to hold stocks? Sure. Do we want to hold value stocks over growth? Sure. Do we want to hold the defensive sectors uh, in mass and the more cyclical sectors less so? Yeah. Are we going to continue to tweak the portfolios as we go? Absolutely. Which means you're going to continue to get lots of trade confirmations. Those of you that have portfolios of size enough to use the options hedges, we're pretty active in there as well, folks. So um, our goal here is to capture as little of the bear market as we possibly can with good tactical asset management. We're, of course, we're gonna catch some. And then be in a position when things do improve and legitimately allow us to relieve the hedges and really get back into growthy mode. That's, uh, that's gonna be a while. So stay tuned. I will continue to communicate more than you probably need. And uh, hope you have a wonderful weekend and please uh, stay very safe. No, I don't need to tell you, but let's just kind of keep our distance from people for the time being. Take care. Bye-bye.